Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video blog. For the fourth day of September 2013, the National Hurricane Center monitoring a couple of areas here. This is 97L, big paragraph written about it. Chances of development are starting to go up. We'll look at why in just a moment. And then this tropical wave sitting in and around the Yucatan Peninsula and the southern Gulf of Mexico has potential for development, albeit low, over the next several days. Looking at the vorticity signature, this is one of my favorite tools. We still see rather oblong shape, 297L, but vorticity, the energy, starting to maximize itself right there south of Puerto Rico. If we take a look at a satellite picture, in fact, a satellite loop of the area, you'll see it is starting to get a little bit better organized. This is not very good news, though, for obvious reasons. One of which is the heavy rain that's going to be spreading over this region over the next 24 to 48 hours, maybe longer than that. Uh, this seems to be the system that's taking over currently. All this energy out here competing with it, yes, but this area seems to be the one that's starting to develop more. And those heavy rains are going to move across Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and then eventually into the southeast Bahamas. And this could be a problem for flooding, mudslides, you name it. Then the other tropical wave here could move across the Bay of Campeche with development chances possibly increasing over the next few days. Let's take a look at the GFS from this morning's run. We'll take a look at the next five days. This is valid tomorrow morning. So Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, low pressure area in the Bay of Campeche. We have stretched out energy associated with 97L and then really nothing off the African coast. By day two, uh, the low pressure area hanging around here in the Bay of Campeche. So this tells me that like Fernon, a uh, week or so ago, maybe this system will come in and develop sort of at the last possible moment before going into Mexico. So interest in the southwest Bay of Campeche and the coast of Mexico there. Possibly some moisture spreading up into Texas, uh, loosely associated with this tropical wave and the moisture down there. And then we see still really no bundling of the energy associated with 97L, 48 hours out. And then activity trying to pick up off the coast of Africa, though I am skeptical to believe it, considering that we haven't seen anything as of late take root out there. 72 hours out. GFS showing a couple of areas here still competing. Not sure what the GFS is doing. It's probably having issues still with this large envelope of energy. Bay of Campeche is still unsettled. Now we have some pretty deep low pressure, 1,009 millibars or so, maybe lower than that. Moving off the coast of Africa, the GFS advertising uh, by day four, just 96 hours out, the formation of a pretty good tropical storm near the Cape Verde Islands south of this strong Azores High. That's the Azores Islands right there. The high sent it right on top of them. So this should move on off to the west, though it's curious in that it doesn't move much at all. We still I have this very large area of energy, two low pressure centers in the southwest Atlantic. Still not sure what's going to happen with that system, but interest in the Bahamas. Definitely going to want to watch that. Could be some squally weather for your area. Finally, by day five, GFS indicating a very healthy, large tropical cyclone moving to the south and west of the Cape Verde Islands, south of this huge Azores high pressure area. A uh, little low pressure area still in the Bahamas with another one escaping to its north and east. Kind of an odd pattern. Not sure exactly what to make of it, but it's going to mean uh, a few interesting days ahead. If the system here, 97L, develops in the Bahamas to any great extent and gets left instead of escaping out, then we may have something lingering uh, as high pressure tries to build back off in the northwest Atlantic over the next few days. And then we'll have to see what happens with this feature out in the far eastern Atlantic. Normally, when they're south of these large high-pressure centers, they move briskly along to the west. But this system seems to just stay there, which doesn't make much sense to me. So let's see if it even forms first, and then we'll see what happens with any kind of steering. So some interesting goings-on in the tropics. Still no sign of a hurricane forming just yet. And the latest date so far that that's ever happened was on the 11th of September 2002 when Hurricane Gustav finally formed, quote-unquote finally, 
Uh, that's the latest that it ever took up to now. Uh, so we'll see if we're going to break that record. There is potential for that to go by the wayside if nothing forms over the next week or so. But I think that system in the eastern Atlantic has some promise unless the models are just overdoing it and the conditions out there are just too hostile. We'll find out. I guess we'll do so together on these updates and, of course, through all the great tools that you have to monitor such things on Hurricane Pro and Hurricane HD. Have a good rest of your, um, what is today, uh, Wednesday? Yes, sorry. <laughs> Lost track of time. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. I am Mark Suddeth uh, for HurricaneTrack.com. That's my website. And, yes, it is Wednesday. Have a good one, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.